Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft Supply. We're going to talk about dyeing leather. Now, sometimes when you get into leather, your first thought is, oh no, dye's going to be a mess, it's going to be expensive. No, not at all. I can show you a way to dye where there's dye on nothing but your project. You can dye in small areas. You'll get a consistent, clean dye every time. Now, we're going to dye, but we've got to choose our dye. The first thing we need to talk about is picking our dye. There's all kinds of dyes out there, but here's the cheat sheet. Go straight to oil dye. We're going to use that in our tutorial first and foremost because it's my favorite dye. And I'll show you why here in a second. But secondly, because we can dip dye. It's very fast, it's very clean, and very consistent. Perfect example. Notice my colors here. Now, one of the things I'm looking for in a dye is richness in color. That's what I have here. That's what I'm looking for. These are, that's a beautiful red, green, blues, yellows, full selection of brown. That's what I want. Secondly, notice how consistent my dye is. Now, I've done that with no trouble at all, but that's one of the things I'm looking for in a dye. Now, third, I don't want my dye to make my leather stiff. Oil dye will allow that leather to feel just like it did before you dyed it. And the last thing, and this is most important, I don't want my dye rubbing off. Now, there's no perfect sealant to dye. The best pair of Italian shoes on a rainy day will bleed, but we're gonna get you so close that it's almost negligible. So I've got a setup at a dye station, gonna show you how to dye in a small area if you don't have a big shop. So let's move over here, we'll pick up from there. Nice, now not all of us have the big work table uh, or a big shop to dye in. Sometimes we're on the coffee table or the kitchen room table or a card table. Well, with that in mind, I'm gonna put down a plastic bag. Now we're not gonna be throwing this away regularly. You'll see this is pretty clean and tidy. So I'm just gonna fold this whole thing up, gloves and all, set it aside, next time I need to dye, I'm ready to go. But once dye hits this plastic, it gets very slippery. But the bigger problem is the dye will pool on this. If I flip my project over to dye the back, when I flip it back, I'm gonna have spotting and I wanna get away from that. So I'm just gonna drop in some inexpensive paper, in this case, wrapping paper, cardboard works nicely, and I'm gonna add gloves. Again, this is a very clean, tidy way to dye, but still, I'm made out of leather too, and it's a little embarrassing to go to work for two or three days with green, red, or saddle tan fingers, right? Now, dyeing, number of ways to dye. You can go all the way to an airbrush. That is the top-notch best way to go. But I don't have a compressor, I don't have an airbrush, nor the room to do it. Daubers, great way to go. These little guys will hold a lot of dye. You've seen foam brushes. You put it in the dye, and then it dribbles all the way to your project. These won't do it. These will hold a lot of dye. There's lamb's wool, they're disposable, and they keep your hand a good bit away from the dye. Now, because I'm using oil dye, I can dip dye. I'm not worried about the leather getting stiff, the, the colors going dark, so I can dip dye. Now, almost every project I have has a hole in it, and I can make little hooks out of coat hangers or, bar, or uh, bailing wire. If you don't have a hole in your project, it's no problem. Just dip with your fingers because we've got gloves on. But let's use this little hook. All I'm gonna do, I don't wanna go fast, I don't wanna go too slow, but right there, that's all I need. I'm gonna bang it against the side of my bin, lay it out, and walk away. It is that easy. So, nice setup, ready to go. Let's let that dry. We're gonna get back over here. I've got a dry one. We're gonna put some top coat on it. So, what a breeze. Dying relatively easy, no mess. Dye only on my project and nothing else. That's what we're looking for. Now, I've got a piece here I dyed prior to the tutorial so it would dry. You can see this is just gorgeous. Look how very consistent the dye is. And all we did, dip it, set it aside, and walk away. But it's a little lifeless. Let's put a top coat on that. Now we'll have a tutorial explaining top coats in detail, but for now, look at that finish. That's beautiful. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And once you pick up dyes, there are dyes, there are stains, there are antiques. There is a world of possibilities when you're working with dyes, particularly the oil dyes that give you such a pretty color. Well, I hope everything you dye is absolutely beautiful. Good luck with your projects.